Marcus Conti reporting, trying to stay awake through the Mueller report. The Mueller, <laughs> Mueller getting grilled on Capitol Hill, testifying about the, 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 the famous Mueller report, Russiagate reunited, right? Fucking reignited, ignited on Capitol Hill. My God, this guy is so boring and, and clearly senile. Is it just me, or does he not know what the hell he's saying anymore? He sounds like a, he sounds like he's way fucking out of his league, way like like senile. So the, for the most part, I only caught one in three hours of watching so far. I've only caught one testimony, one uh, a Tom a Tom McClintock, Clintock, I mean, Tom McClintock from California, Republican, grilled uh, him a little bit. Nobody so far has talked about the most essential part of this case, which is number three, GRU hacking. Directed hacking directed at the Clinton campaign. GRU units targeted the Clinton campaign. Intrusions into DN, DCCC, DNC networks, right? DNC leaks, Guccifer, Seth Rich, right? Nothing. Not a damn word about any of that stuff, right? Nothing. All you talk about is maybe the closest we got to was this exchange right here. Why, we'll just, just watch one exchange and then I'll talk. Well, I'm not going to go further in terms of discussing the... Uh, well, let, let's go on. You, you extensively discuss Konstantin Kalimnik's activities with Paul Manafort. You describe in his quote, a Russian-Ukrainian political consultant and longtime employee of Paul Manafort assessed by the FBI to have ties to Russian intelligence. And again, that's all we would know from your report, except we've since learned from news articles that Kalimnik was actually a U.S. State Department intelligence source, yet nowhere in your report is he so identified. Why was that... I don't, I don't necessarily credit uh, what you're saying uh, occurred. Were you aware that Kalimnik was uh, a, a I'm not going to go into the department ins and outs. I'm not going to go into the ins and outs of what we had in the, cor did did in the, cor in the course did of our investigation. Did you interview Konstantin Kalimnik? Pardon? Did you interview Konstantin Kalimnik? I can't go into the discussion of uh, our uh, investigative moves. And, and yet that is the... the, the basis of your report. Again, the, the problem we're having is we have to rely on your report for an accurate reflection of the evidence, and we're starting to find out that's, that's not true. For example, uh, you, you, your report famously links Russian internet troll farms with the Russian government. Yet at a hearing on May 28th in the Concord Management IRA prosecution that you initiated, the judge excoriated both you and Mr. Barr for producing no evidence to support this claim. Why did you suggest Russia was responsible for the troll farms when in court you've been unable to produce any evidence to support it? Well, I'm not going to get into that any further than I, than I already have. But, but you, you have left the clear impression throughout the country through your report uh, that uh, uh, it was the Russian government behind the troll farms. And yet when you're called upon to provide actual evidence in court, you fail to do so. Well, I would again... Uh, uh, <coughs> dispute your characterization of what occurred in that, pre in that proceeding. In, in, in fact, the judge, considering, uh, considered holding prosecutors in criminal contempt, she backed off only after your hastily called press conference the next day in which you retroactively made the distinction between the Russian government and the Russia troll farms. Did your press conference of May 29th have anything to do with uh, the threat to hold your prosecutors in contempt the previous day for publicly misrepresenting the evidence? What was the question? <laughs> the, the question is, did your May 29th press conference have anything to do with the fact that the previous day the judge threatened to hold your prosecutors in contempt for misrepresenting evidence? No. What a fucking sham, right? You know what's interesting, right? Because this, this, um, this Republican congressman is doing a great job. He's pushing. He's saying, where is the evidence? When you showed up in court against the Russian troll farms, right, to to in, to indict Russian troll farms, the judge judge asked you, "Where's the evidence to support that it happened?" He's like, "I don't know, I don't know, I don't know." They don't have any evidence, right? The same case. See, this is this is a pretty much how the whole thing is going to go. Uh, I think we're halfway through it at, at this point. But the the point is that even if you if you were to push him in the same direction of the twelve GRU. Uh, Russian agents that were indicted, when some of those agents actually showed up to court, Mueller pulled off of the case. He pulled back and said, oh, no, no, we're not ready for them yet because they don't have any evidence to prove any of the things that we're talking about. So th there's not, we're not going to find out 
we're not going to find out here. Let's just watch the end of it. You know, the, 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 the fundamental problem is, is, as I said, we've got to take your word, your team faithfully, accurately, impartially, and completely described all of the underlying evidence in the Mueller report. And we're finding more and more instances where this just isn't the case. And it's starting to look like, you know, having desperately tried and failed to make a legal case against the president, you made a political case instead. You put it in a paper sack, lit it on fire, dropped it on our porch, rang the doorbell, and ran. I don't uh, that's good, man. See, that's a nice exchange right there. But again, we're not going to get to any of the uh, the real stuff. Did this? Did see, look for me? It's all about the whole Mueller report is is piled on on the predicate belief on the belief that the Russians hacked the DNC back in 2016. There is no evidence that that happened. It simply did not happen. We believe that it was a a, a leak from inside, not a hack. There's no evidence to suggest that the DNC servers were hacked. The the, the FBI, the uh, uh, you know um, the law enforcement agencies at the time never inspected the DNC servers. The DNC servers were ultimately destroyed. Before that, they were looked at by a, an organization called CrowdStrike in Virginia, paid for by the Clinton campaign to inspect the servers. How how is that even possible? That 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 one of the parties, one of the candidates in the DNC, the Democratic candidate, is funding the 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 research into the the DNC servers being hacked. And it's just, it, the whole thing is so ridiculous. And now you look at Mueller's demeanor and you look at his, um, his, his inability to answer a question. I'm not going to talk about anything that's not on the piece of paper. His inability to produce a speck of evidence above and beyond uh, any of the things that are written down. We will never see any evidence because there is no evidence. There never will be any evidence. But the, the takeaway is that all of the politicians, all of them, Republicans and Democrats, are still leaning on the fact that the, the Democratic National Committee, the DNC, was hacked by Russian operatives. And those Russian operatives passed that information to WikiLeaks, Julian Assange, who's now sitting in jail for publishing information. Uh, that, is the, that is the premise of the whole thing. Whether Trump obstructed uh, uh, justice into something that never even happened, whether whether um, uh, you know there was there was collusion in any way with the Russian government is all irrelevant because the predicate crime, the alleged predicate crime, is that Russians hacked the DNC in the in the early months of 2016, April, May, June, passed that information on to or March, April, May, whatever, of 2016, pass that information on to WikiLeaks. And then that caused Hillary Clinton to lose to Trump months later. When in actuality, what it did was it, it, it caused, it revealed the corruption within the DNC and how they were cheating against the one Bernie Sanders. That's really what it proved. So, I mean, again, there's nothing, there's nothing, nothing here. It's a, it's a, I don't know. It's just a no. It's a it's a nothing burger, right? Mueller's there babbling away. He seems a little senile. He can't hear the question. He can't answer the question. When the question is is tough, he says, "I, I don't know. Uh, I I don't have. I can't talk about that." Is a you know. It's just it's total bullshit. I mean, I was I was anticipating it about a month ago, but now having watched it, it seems to be just a you know a fucking rolled up shit sandwich. And uh, I don't know. What's your opinion? I mean, people are watching it, right? That was about the only exchange that, that made any sense to me, that someone at least pushed a little bit about the, the troll farms, which had no influence on the election. Talk about the, the, the hack that occurred. How did, how did the Russians, did the Russians get that information, the DNC stuff, Podesta's emails, and pass it to Julian Assange? Did that really happen? There's nothing, 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 nothing. Nothing to suggest that it did. Right, so, without that, there is no Russiagate. Right? It's just a it's just a story of history, and and um, yeah, I don't know. It's just a, it's just a, it's a mark on history, a bad mark on history. Marcus Conti reporting.